we need to familiarize ourselves with what are the codes, what are the doable ones, what needs to be done. And I also think when you talk about seniors and, and if they're not making the codes, there are a lot of groups out there that if we're not familiarized with what exists, the police department has some good groups, the fire department has good groups, um, there's a lot of organizations out there that have it, but it's back to communication, getting the right groups together. When, in walking the streets, I found one of the things people are afraid of, they're afraid to turn their neighbor in, that they're going to pay a price for that. And so they need to know if it can be anonymous. We need to get out there and educate them and the people doing it. So that's my you said there. Thank you. Uh, Bill Van Vesker. Thank you. I moved into Raytown in 1972, and uh, you know, we try to keep our property up always. It, it's discouraging sometimes when you have neighbors who don't. And uh, it hurts your property value. Uh, it makes it difficult to attract new families into our, into our community. So keeping our city attractive through promotion of cleanup, pickup, and fix-up is, is vitally important. Enforcement of our existing codes certainly goes hand-in-hand hand with that process. We need to continue to promote improvement. This will make uh, of, of properties. Uh, this will make our community more attractive to businesses and again to families who are considering making Raytown their home. You know, the city makes coupons available to assist citizens in cleaning up their properties, uh, partially paid for by the citizen, partially by the city government. Those are always available here at City Hall. Uh, we have streamlined, streamlined the process to get these problems corrected in a more uh, effective and expedient manner. Also, often our codes enforcement officers do direct uh, people who are having problems and maybe can't get those things fixed to other groups uh, to assist them, churches and other groups that will help them with, the, with their needs. Thank you. Louisa Hayden. Loretta Hayden, candidate for Alderman Moore II. Um, one of the things that I think that we um, could do is to create a, a committee or program to assist the code enforcement folks, because perhaps, again, we don't have enough people in that um, arena to, to address all of the, um, the uh, code enforcement issues. Um, I think we need to investigate and find out what the problem is, because a lot of times, you know, like a senior citizen, a mom or something else is having a hard time uh, keeping up with the property. So I think that if we create this committee, go in, investigate, find out what the problem is, and then give them the the information that they need to um, to assist them in updating their property. And then uh, I'd like the, to continue the cleanup day and, and even further than that, expand that and maybe have a heavy item pickup day so that they can clean up and not have any items. And, uh, and then the biggest thing is to increase home ownership and, um, as, as opposed to renters. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Now I'll move on to our next question. Do you support a recycling effort in Raytown? If so, how? And if not, why not? And the first person to respond to this will be Chuck Haynes. I'm a great believer in recycling, and I believe everyone should be looking into that in their own homes and their own personal environment. We, we need to uh, reuse and, and recycle as much as we possibly can, and I do support a recycling plan within Raytown. Uh, the simple act of cleaning up after storms and helping recycle some of the brush and the debris after the storm, I think, is something that we need to look into, and it's something that other cities do. We have a, uh, in a neighboring community, uh, we have a uh, recycling area that uh, will take in um, all of the materials that we need to recycle, whether they're uh, dangerous or not, and uh, at a, at a re very reasonable price. So yes, I think we need to do this, and I think it can be handled um, with uh, some money from the city and with some volunteer help. I think there are people in this community who are very willing uh, to help out to uh, not only clean up the cities, but to recycle that waste. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Ryan Myers. Well, I can say being younger, uh, my generation is probably the beginning of the green movement. We all have people my age are buying electric cars, they're, they're uh, concerned with the environment. I do support recycling in Raytown. Uh, it is going to cost money, so there would be some uh, need to be some reallocation of monetary money if we we're going to uh, subsidize it. Um, I do think that it is important for our city, um, and it'll help beautify it. Um, but yeah, I do, I do support it. Jason Green. Thank you, Jason Green, Alderman Ward Two. Um, actually, can give some else props here to Mr. Walters. He, uh, this, he's been a strong advocate for this in the past, and he used to have aspects of this and went away. I do think it needs to come back. Um, it's, it also can assist with codes and things such as that, beautifications, environmental friendly. But to me, it all, all boils down to is an image issue. Anything you have that you can program or something you can do to try to beautify the town, clean up the streets, the recycling center could help do that. You know, it helps it helps create a positive image for our community. It makes our streets look better. When folks drive through and see how clean things are. Little things like that all come together. Property values do rise, you know. All ships rise. And so um, I, I'm in support of entertaining that discussion and trying to uh, move forward in a way that, that can help facilitate creating a more positive image for, for our community. Greg Walters. Yes, um, Greg Walters, my name is for all the women Ward One. And first, I would like to thank you, Jason. Very kind of you. Um, he's, what he was mentioning was we did have a recycling center in Raytown for quite a while, and I, I was the major proponent of it back in the early 1990s when the city started to go in the recycling business. It used to be located in what is now uh, where Walmart is on 350 Highway. And then when the construction began on that, site and it was clear that it wasn't going to be able to be there. I chaired a committee where we moved the, the uh, location to the public works uh, area where the trucks and so forth are kept for the city's public works equipment. Um, the thing that I noticed mainly about recycling that I really enjoyed was I, I would understand what Mr. Myers is saying about being the generation that does it, but my observation was it was mainly senior citizens who took advantage of the recycling the most. And I think that I, I, I would see them go to the recycling center, and I think what it is that it, it's a sense of pride and sense of there's here's a way you can take part in uh, keeping recycling going and be an active participant, be part of the community. So I think it's a great thing to do, and I would hope to bring it back. I would work to do that. Thank you, Diane Creasy. Diane Creasy, Ward 5 candidate. I am very much in support of recycling. I actually served on a recycling committee that Greg Walters chaired when we, we were tasked to move it from the Joe Herndon to um, the public works se uh, sector or section um, of the town. What I'm really not on top of some of what's going on. Um, some of these recycling centers are closing down. I'm troubled by that, like Lee Summit I was going to. But um, we definitely, it's not only cleaning up our town, but it's just economical. I hate waste. Another thing that uh, Raytown really needs is um, disposal of hazardous materials. We are one of, very, we are one of the very few that don't have that ability as residents of Raytown to dispose of hazardous materials at the site. Frank Hunt. Frank Hunt, Board 1. Uh, recycling has been around for a long time. Uh, ever since I moved into uh, Raytown, I've been able to recycle some items. Uh, but now we're thinking about expanding that and making it more complete. Uh, I did get a letter in the mail just the other day from a AAA uh, trash operation. They've got recycling that they want to offer to all of their people. So we do have companies that are growing within our group that would allow us to, to uh, enjoy this um, thing that I also support. Uh, I think uh, 
the trash that's on the streets, uh, the, the uh, pride that people take whenever we actually get ourselves into a, a cleaner environment, uh, it just grows and grows. So we've, we've got to have that uh, in our city. Janet Emerson. Thank you. Janet Emerson, Alderman 13. I was very disheartened when they closed the recycling center because I did use that an awfully lot. And little do a lot of people know that Greg Walters put money up there to keep it open for a longer time than it was intended to stay open. But I am very much in favor of having a recycling uh, place for us to do that. I know we have individuals that walk down the streets and pick up trash, which is absolutely excellent. But we do need a recycling center to, to help make our city look better. Thank you. Bonnie Mims. <coughs> Bonnie Mims, candidate for Ward 5 Alderman. I strongly support recycling. And I see that already since I had done my due diligence that Mr. Walters has gotten his tools before it got to me. Um, but the other part that I saw too in this is on um, the hazardous waste. That is definitely something that's needed. And in walking, I saw so many mattresses and just bags of trash and, and big pieces of wood that was just laying out in the road. So um, I would like to see us get back to a recycling center that would have those items that you'd be able to take them somewhere. And then we can hold those people accountable that's not doing it. And those fines would be something that you would see that was something that you can say, yes, we have tried everything to get this done. So recycling is something that I'd like to see us get back to, the hazardous waste, the old medications, and that way to help out all of our people. And then we can get back to those Thank you. Marisa Hayden. I strongly support recy the re a recycling plan. Um, I think that it would help create a more positive image for Raytown. Uh, it will make it a more inviting city. I know that um, as citizens of Raytown, we're saying, but the cost, but the cost. And I think that um, that actually um, the, the fact that it would beautify a city would outweigh the cost that uh, would be involved. And I know that my husband is really strong about recycling newspaper. I started to throw some uh, newspaper away. So I told him, we're, we're, we're saving that for recycling. So we strongly uh, support uh, recycling. I'd like to see us get back to a recycling plan in right now. Bill Van Buskirk. Thank you. Uh, what are we going to work for? Uh, as some of the candidates stated, uh, we did have a recycling center. Uh, it was behind the Public Works Department, and we paid city employees overtime to man that facility. It became cost prohibitive. Uh, there's a very limited number of people that utilize uh, that facility. I, I would go up there at times and just observe how many people came. Uh, if you look at the total number of people in our city versus how many actually used it, uh, I would certainly welcome that again if it were manned by volunteers who have a heart for that and, and want to participate in that. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, you know, there's, well, there's opportunities to, to do that now. There are some recycling places in the city. You know, the Raytown South High School, get rid of newspapers. There's, there's a number of those around behind uh, Funhouse Pizza and other areas. Uh, also, many of our trash services provide that service if people are 